Things about service seem to be a driving force within the church. And I can attest to that because literally the first Sabbath, uh, I, when I got here and I walked through the door, the first person I met was Sister Diva. She was the first person. She says, hello, pastor. Um, welcome. You know, she kind of told me some basic, you know, orientation things. And then she started telling me, all right, so this Thursday, you know, we, we're, we're going to have our food distribution this week and next week. And we got prep for it. You know, so she was like in, in the mindset of just letting, letting me know. So I was like, oh, wow, this is extremely true. This is a church that is dedicated to service. And you could see that basically every day is a two day operation where they're, they're, they're going, they're gathering, getting all the food, food bank distributes the food. Um, Wednesday is the big day of setup. And then Thursday is the actual distribution. People even can literally just come, take a shower. They also have toiletries that are donated. Clothes are hanging on racks and they are ironed. Just having the best possible presentation so that you feel like you're coming into a store mm -hmm. and you're getting, you know, whatever um, items you need. This ministry has been going on since long as I've been in this church. And I've been in this church a little bit over 15 years. It's always been a part of the congregation, functioning to do what the scriptures teaches us to do. To the least of these you've done it to, you've done it unto me. I made a commitment to God, and I've been on board ever since. Makes me a better person, and if nothing else, I'm not here to convince you or to convert you. I'm just here to serve God, and in that, if you see something you like, you gravitate, you draw to that. And when you see that kind of example, you gravitate towards that thing too. You want to do that. I want some of that. I want to do some of that. Especially when you know it ain't no money behind it and you want to do it, you know that's God. I used to be homeless. I was a full-blown drug addict. And that's why I have passion inside of me. I used to be them. And in so many ways, I could still be them because I still struggle in different areas. But I know there's a God, a living God. It says love like I love you. Forgive like I forgive you. They're no different from them. So I'm not going to turn my face when I see them. This is what I call truly living God's written word. I have to. Because I'm living my life in vain if I do anything different. You know, I had a house, apartment, everything, mm -hmm. and then my job. Then I got sick and I lost everything. Mm -hmm. And went in the streets for two years. And then one day a lady talked to me, a church lady, and she says, I can get you some help, Joe. And she says, I'm glad I made it out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my life is good now. The church, they'll help you too, because they know people's, you know. <laughs> Like in real life, if this church is gone, are people just gonna keep walking by as normal? Or will they be like, man, they were really doing something out here. And we're really working towards that. Let's be about it and quit talking about it. And let's do it, let's make a difference. Really make a difference. Cause it used to be me. And look at me now, I ain't pretty, but I'm faithful. How about that?